Good afternoon, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Professor Hyung Lok Kim from Jeonnam National University. I am in charge of a moderator for this session. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the speaker of this session. Uh, I will introduce the speaker uh, briefly. Uh, the speaker is Professor Hejin Kim. Uh, she graduated Gyeongbuk National University and she has trained uh, surgical residency in the same hospital. Uh, she is now working for Gyeongbuk National University Hospital. The topic of today is reducing wound complication in laparoscopic or robotic colorectal surgery with uh, antibacterial barbed suture. Professor Kim, would you start? Thank you for inviting me in this lunch and symposium. I miss conference meal, but in this time, maybe I will have lunch and enjoy the conference at home. I hope all of you enjoyed lunch with my small talk. Today, my topic is about introducing suture material for adequate wound closure. Who is the main person to close the wound? This is a very po popular Korean drama, White Tower, Hayangotta. We can know who is the main person to perform wound closure. Main actor, surgeon said after finishing main procedure, please do bleeding control irrigation and close the wound. And then he takes a rest with drinking coffee. Closing time is coffee time for surgeon. <laughs> Opening and closing the abdominal wall has been a rite of passage for surgical training. This task was often left to a more junior member of the surgical team as a reward for assisting with a long laparotomy. However, closure of the abdominal wall is an important step for the patient. The risk is of incisional hernia the commonest made a complication of a laparotomy, with its attendant symptoms and the frequent need for further surgery. Despite this, there is a noticeable lack of research focusing on the optimal methods to close the abdominal wall. The incidence of surgical site infection, wound disease, and the instant hernia is relatively high. However, some studies reported very low rate of wound complications. It means 
This complication can be reduced by optimal strategy. When we look at the instance of surgical site infection by country, WHO reported total incidence of SSI in general surgery ranges from 2 to 15 percent. Korea reported a very low rate of SSI. However, when we look at the instance of SSI by organ and operation type, colon surgery reported the highest rate of SSI around 15%. Surgical site infection, especially wound complication, is most preventable infection. And we can also reduce the patient's additional cost. In addition, wound complication is an associated risk for another complications. SSI can result in a two times greater risk of incisional hernia and six times greater risk of wound separation considering emergency surgery. Wound decence is a significant risk factor for incisional hernia. How about laparoscopic surgery? Laparoscopic surgery showed significantly lower wound infection rate than open surgery. However, still, it was reported from 4% to 9% after colorectal surgery. What are the operative factors that affect fascia healing? Among several factors, Today, I am focusing on suture technique and material. In one study, they evaluated 1,144 patients who underwent laparoscopic surgery for primary colorectal cancer. They reported 17% of patients had postoperative complications including 4.5% of wound infection and 4.4% of suture failure and 3.6% of obstruction. Postoperative hospital stay was significantly longer in patients with wound infection as 14 days than in those without wound infection as 8 days. When they evaluated the risk factor of wound infection on multivariate analysis, right colon tumor, lower albumin level, anastomosis technique, and the suture material were significantly increased wound infection. Among them, non tricoclosan coated PDS suture increased wound infection. About antibacterial suture, already many societies recommended the use of triclosan coated suture for reducing SSI, including American College of Surgeons, WHO, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. In 2015, the first European Hernia Society guidelines on the closure of the abdominal wall was published. 13% of incidental hernia developed in 28 month follow-up. Postoperative SSI, obesity, and aortic aneurysm were risk factors. They suggested that Suture material and the surgical technique used to close an abdominal wall incision are the most important determinants of the risk of developing an incisional hernia.
Two high-quality RCT showed higher incidence of incident hernia after midline incision. However, there are many cases we cannot move incision site. Next, two meta-analysis concluded that continuous suture is better than interrupted suture, although most RCT are at risk of bias about suture material. And the small bite suture resulted in significantly less incision hernia and less wound infection. Single layer upon neurotic suturing technique, taking bites of fascia of 5 to 8 mm and placing stitches every 5 mm is the small bite technique. In conclusion, they recommended the slowly observable, continuous, and small bite suturing are the optimal technique for reducing incident hernia. I also used to prefer to do interrupted suture because this technique gives more security. On the other hand, in continuous closure, strength and security can be compromised with one break in the suture. However, as I showed before, interrupted closure has higher risk of incision hernia originating from inconsistent distribution of tension and not related complications. And this method also time-consuming technique. Another meta-analysis evaluated 14 RCTs also supported that continuous sutures has a significantly lower rate of incision hernia compared with interrupted sutures. So, ideal suture material will be continuous suture pattern with a high tissue holding strength like interrupted suture and also antibacterial suture. Stratafix Symmetric PDS was specially designed to provide the benefits of a not least tissue control device with the exceptional strength appropriate for high tension area such as fascia. And it was proved in vivo to kill bacteria on the suture known to be associated with SSI. In the end of suture, it has fixation tab anchors the device in intact tissue. When comparing tissue holding strength compared to PDS loop continuous technique and the vicary interrupted technique, Stratafix showed more strength and security than other types, 25% superiority compared to PDS loop and 39% superiority to Vicryl. And the Stratafix was shown in vitro to inhibit bacterial colonization of the suture for 7 days or more. And the triclosan is effective on broad spectrum of pathogens. Let me show two videos. Stratafix Symmetric PDS Plus device is the only knotless tissue control device appropriate for closing high tension areas such as fascia. It delivers more security, more consistent control, and more efficiency than traditional sutures, and is proven in vitro to inhibit bacterial colonization of the suture. The instructions for use outline a recommended closure technique for optimal security and strength. This technique is designed to isolate the fixation tab away from the incision, minimize tension, and ensure a strong, dependable closure. To begin, 
Take the first pass in intact tissue directly above or adjacent to the apex in a direction away from the incision. Pull the device through the tissue to gently seat the fixation tab. The fixation tab should be seated above the tissue plane and be visible. Do not exert additional force on the fixation tab or device. Moving toward the apex of the incision, take a pass in the intact tissue perpendicular to the initial pass to lock the stitch. Multiple passes are acceptable. Pull gently on the device to take up any slack. Proceed with a continuous suturing pattern to close the incision, taking opposing bites on either side of the wound in standard fashion. To achieve the desired approximation and tension, gently pull on the device with each tissue passage. Continue approximating along the length of the incision, taking care not to over-tighten the device. Retain approximately 3 inches 8 centimeters of the device for completing reverse stitching to secure the terminal end. To complete and secure the closure, take two passes in the reverse direction across the incision. Gently pull on the free end of the device and cut flush with the surface of the tissue. Closure with the Stratifix Symmetric PDS Plus device, as shown in this video, will provide more security, more consistency, and more efficiency than traditional sutures. Thank you for your interest in the Stratifix Symmetric PDS Plus device. In this test, a cut was applied to the Stratifix Symmetric PDS Plus device and the continuous 2O PDS Plus suture in the center of the incision as shown by the marked blue circle. The Stratifix Symmetric PDS Plus device showed an average gapping height of 0.4 millimeters, while the continuous 2O PDS Plus suture showed an average gapping height and wound separation of 9.6 millimeters. Recently, one multi-center randomized controlled trial evaluated the efficacy of two close and coated barbed polydioxane suture on reducing incisional SSI. So they compared this antibacterial barbed PDS with antibacterial coated PDS and conventional PDS. Let me show the video using Stratafix. Firstly, sit the fixation tab in intact tissue above the apex. During this time, do not exert additional force on the fixation tab. Moving toward the apex of the incision, take a pass. and continuous suturing pattern to close the incision in standard pattern. To achieve the desired approximation and tension, gently pull on the device with each tissue passage. To complete and secure the closure, Take two passes in the transverse 
direction across the incision. Then gently pull on the free end of the device and cut flush with the surface of the tissue. The primary endpoint was incisional SSI and the abseration rate within 30 days after surgery. The secondary endpoints were postoperative pain, analytical acute phase reactants, including WBC, CRP, lactate, and fibrinogen assessed 48 hours after surgery as well as identification of microorganisms from incisional SSI. Patients who undergo emergent operation, including bowel obstruction, requiring bowel resection, fecal peritonitis, and bowel ischemia with a midline approach. In each group, 47, 45, and 47 patients were evaluated. As a result, in seasonal SSI, only infection was significantly lower in strata fixed group than other two groups, and there was no evisceration in strata fixed group. When comparing triclos and carded versus non carded material, Wound infection rate was significantly lower in triclosan group, and evisceration was significantly lower in barbed suture stratafix group. Stratafix nutless tissue control devices provide the wound holding strength of interrupted suturing with greater security, efficiency, and consistency than conventional continuous string. In conclusion, fascia healing is complex and could be delayed by a variety of factors. Certain operative factors are under a surgeon's control. A rigorous review of clinical evidence shows that only closure choices can affect outcomes and complication risk, and the ideal fascia closure technique is composed of continuous suture pattern, antibacterial suture, depending on patient and the procedure factors. Finally, antibacterial barbed suture can reduce several wound complications, such as SSI and wound separation to improve patient healing. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Professor Kim, uh, for your uh, nice presentation. Actually, I have never seen this kind of suture material before. So after watching this video, uh, it's very nice to use this uh, suture material for uh, the operation. Uh, I think uh, there's no question in audience. Uh, <clears throat> I have a very uh, silly question for you. Uh, right now, uh, I, I think this kind of material uh, is very useful for the closure of uh, ileostomy repair. Have you uh, used this uh, suture material for the facial closure for ileostomy repair? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, thank you <laughs> for a nice <laughs> comment, Professor Kim. Uh, uh, recently, I uh, started to apply this material to close the wound. I mainly use it for the midline wound. And sometimes uh, I used it the uh, uh, ileostomy site uh, located in the right lower quadrant. But uh, in that case, I usually prefer the layered suture after uh, closing the peritoneum, and then I close the uh, fascia layer only using the stratafix. But um, 
Yeah, I just uh, applied three or four cases, but uh, I uh, didn't experience the wound infection. How about the uh, perineal repair for APR patient? The perineal closure. Mm. Uh, uh, I think it, it also, we can, uh, we also uh, apply it to uh, that kind of wound, but I've never experienced about that. Yeah, actually the uh, rectal cancer patient after CCRT, if the patient had, uh, had the APR, the perineal wound is a big problem. Usually, we experience wound complications such as wound infection, and then sometimes we have to blow out the perineal wound, reducing right. the, the, the perineal sepsis. So, I think uh, is it also useful to close the perineal wound for APR patient or not? So uh, if uh, we had a chance, we uh, it's very uh, interesting to compare the wound complication in such uh, radiated tissues such as APR mm -hmm. and then sometimes uh, etc. So uh, have you uh, any plan to study of this uh, suture material named Stratopix? Uh, for the patient's uh, uh, rectal cancer, as uh, in case of APR or sometimes elastic repair and uh, etc. Uh, if you give a help to <laughs> that study, <laughs> I will try it. <laughs> okay, this big uh, issue, I think, there it is very uh, good for the a surgeon and also good for the patient. So uh, if we had a chance, let's get together and uh, make a small uh, a study. Okay. Uh, Thank you for your suggestion. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, this session is lunch on, so we would better close this session. So thank you again, Professor Kim, and then and for the whole audience for watching this session. Thank you and see you Thank next. You.